For Montana East Regional News, this is Emily Boyles. Ever seen a tree with Johnny plus Susie carved in it? At Medicine State Park, epitaphs like that are carved all over into the rocks, and there's meaning behind them. I am with Ryan Sokolowski from Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. And Ryan, we know you as the manager from Akoshika State Parks, but that's no longer the only thing that you do. Tell me about what the changes are in the park system and what it is you do now. As of June 30th last year, the agency tried to focus more on the individual state parks and began managing medicine rocks in conjunction with Makoshika State Park. So, and you've gotten to spend this last week at Medicine Rocks. It is a 320 acre park that has wonderful natural resources, lots and lots, just teeming with birds, great trees. Aesthetically, it is a phenomenal park and it has some modern history, which intrigues me very much. I think just growing up, being born and raised in Eastern Montana, I always, I grew up with an appreciation for the different ranchers and farmers and the, the settlers who, who first moved to this area and carved out a life for, for their family and then their community, their small town, and ultimately into a bustling little economy. And when you talk about the word <laughs> carving out a life, yeah. that's a no mistake because that's one of the unique features of Medicine Rock State Park. Since the mid 1800s, people carved on those rocks and it's illegal to do now. Let's just clarify that. Tell me about the history. So petroglyphs are recording into the rock uh, carvings that a lot of people, when they think of petroglyphs, they're going to think of the Mayans, the Incas, the Egyptians with the pyramids. These are modern petroglyphs that we would be able to read. It's in, it's in English or it's animals, wildlife that we know. The first ones began that we can readily see today began in the early 1870s and they are in every subsequent year leading up to this year. And there's some fantastic, wonderful history within those petroglyphs that we're trying to get a better hold of so that we don't lose them. They're very well and most certainly were petroglyphs that predate the 1870s that we can no longer make out. There's no reason to, to, to not believe that. There were certainly lots of Native American Indians within that area who, who certainly would have been traveling through and stopped in that within the Medicine Rocks State Park. But we had started an effort in conjunction with Montana State University Billings last year to capture and preserve with 3D photo imaging equipment the petroglyphs that are there so we can preserve them for all of time because with every subsequent rain, with every bit of wind that blows, a little more is eroded away off of those sandstones. And over time, they will all be lost. What's the difference between carving in rocks that were done in 1870 and carving in rocks that's done in 2012? Anything that's 50 years old and older is considered historically relevant. Carving that's younger than 50 years within those rocks is considered vandalism and as such is a crime. We are trying to protect what historically is relevant with this recognition that, that there are some that with every subsequent year, the things that are 49 years old this year will be 50 years old next year. And that stumbling block question of, well, if somebody did it before me, why can't I? Is what we're starting to, to get is there's only so much that can be on those rocks. As a result of, of the limited space, we're starting to get people that are inscribing over very historical uh, records and, and carvings within those rocks. In some cases, they're old brands from local ranching communities, epitaphs of, of love and affection for, uh, for, a, for a son, a, a child, a, a loved one, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband or wife. Those epitaphs do tell the story of Eastern Montana and the Ekalaka area, and you are looking for some of those stories. Tell me about what you're looking for and what people need to do if they may have one of those stories. They know that grandma and grandpa put their heart on those rocks 70 years ago. If there are listeners out there who are recalling that, by golly, you know, uh, 
quite a few years ago when I was a when I was a kid, I carved this, maybe a family brand or maybe a, an epitaph of love to somebody. We would love to have that story so we can attach it to those to those images that we are preserving for all of posterity because they are continuing to be lost. And we want to preserve them because that is our history. That's the history of, of the people who who settled in this country, who lived and raised families here. And how would they do that? Yeah, they could do that by going to their local museum and uh, making sure that, that that story is preserved, or they can contact me. Maybe I can come down and sit with you in your, in your kitchen or in your dining room, wherever, and record some of that so that we never lose that. We can... It's 377-6256, makoshika.org, or montanafishwildlifeandparks.com. If you have a hot news story or a news tip you'd like to share with us, you can email us at newsdesk at kxgn.com. For Montana East Regional News,